Sister Mary Ellen Willihan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting me. Well, as I mentioned to you before we got started, I'm really excited that through Women in Witness, we're going to be able to highlight um, the contributions of both lay and religious women, um, because I think both of those bring such unique perspectives to the church and to our faith life here in the Archdiocese of New Orleans. So I'm, I'm really excited to talk with you today and everything that you do. Thank you. So tell me a little bit first about your background and, and what has brought you to, to where you are and made you who you are. Well, my background would start with my family, mm-hmm. my parents, um, Helen and Keith. Uh, six children so we learned community early we had that community experience one of my friends that I grew up with recently said she used to love to come to our house when she was little because she only had one brother Mm. and one sister and she said we were always happy we always played games we prayed before meals and we did things together so that community experience that give and take was given to us early on Um, The whole experience of faith and of God was instilled into us with our parents and grandparents on both my mother's side and my my father's side. And it is so important to bring attention to the role of parents and to the role of family life and strengthening family life. Um, As women, we have a unique perspective on that, that nurturing kind of side. But um, I know with, with my kids, and then growing up, I was one of five, and now I, I have five. Um, people said the same thing about us. And we would go, why do you want to come to our teeny, tiny, messy house all the time? <laughs> but it was. It was because we had to get along. We had to learn to love one another. And it does give you a unique perspective. It does. When you world. have to share toys, you have to share chores, mm-hmm. um, you have to share rooms and bathrooms, which a lot of children don't do. You know, a lot of families Mm -hmm. spread out and have their own schedules now Mm -hmm. and their own activities. Um, But we learn to do everything together. And your faith life coming from your family, you chose to become a woman religious and with the Sisters of Mount Carmel. Tell me a little bit about about that and what that has meant to you in your life. Well, I come from a unique experience Mm -hmm. in that I was taught by the Sisters of Mount Carmel at St. Dominic. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had that um, prayer and Carmelite spirituality ingrained in my faith life from Mm -hmm. the beginning. But at the same time, we had the Dominican priest, so we had that side of the truth and of study, the value of of finding God um, in the theology, the whole theology aspect of it. And then I went to Cabrini High School where I had the experience of Mother Cabrini, you know, her, her background, and that whole service, the idea of service mm-hmm. to others and meeting the needs of other people um, right here where we are present now. Um, and then as so I went to graduate school, I went to Regis University in Denver for family ministry and learned you know, a different type of service and then and that whole spirituality of the family, that whole spirituality of education came from the Jesuits. So I kind of have a well rounded background <laughs> with the different spiritualities. <laughs> but I love um when I whenever I speak with you, it, it I mean obviously we have to talk about work very okay. often. Um But you always talk about your family. You're so involved with your sisters and your brothers and your nieces and your nephews, and they are engaged with you. Um, And you are obviously part of your religious community. You have that family, but you're able to maintain these relationships in in such a seemingly healthy way. Um, How does your witness as a, a woman religious build into that? Actually, I think sometimes it's... um they built into me. Yeah. They feed me mm-hmm. more than I feed them because of their witness of living the faith in the world that they live in as a fam- as family members. Um, my sisters and brothers still laugh when they look at me and say, she's really a nun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of the six of us, I was the least likely in really? their eyes to be a religious. Hmm. Um, it's always that one. Yeah, right. And But it... it we spend time together. Um, one of my nephews recently, we were talking about when that lottery got so big, and we were saying, oh, we need to go get lottery tickets. 
And one of my, my godchild, the oldest nephew, looked at me and he says, Nanny, why would we want to do that? And I said, cool, might help us. Mm-hmm. And he says, why do we want to ruin a good thing? Mm-hmm. We have a good family support system. Why do we want to add money to it? Wow. You know, there's more to it than money. So it's in the next generation and the following generation. That is a, a really a, an important thing because so many people think, yeah, let's, let's, if we had all the money, we'd save all the problems. I know. But I know. money can cause as many problems. Exactly. But you have also chosen, beyond your vocation, with religious vocation, to use your skills that you learned in family studies and things like that to work for the local church, to work in administration for the Archdiocese of New mm-hmm. Orleans. Um, why? But, but you could have done many other things with your skills and, and with your order. Mm-hmm. Why, why are you here? Why is that important to you? It's important because of my background in education. Um, I go back to Mother Cabrini constantly to look to her example. And one of the things that she always made very clear was that the greatest heritage we can give to a student, to a young person, is an education. Um, and in the church, in the Catholic Church here in the Archdiocese of New Orleans, I have the opportunity, the blessed opportunity, to be able to educate, um, not at this time, children, but adults and parents in how to protect and love their children, um, how to work together in our society with all the devices we have and all of the distractions we have to try to put God in in first place in our family unit. So on outside of the family and outside of um, really your role with the religious with your religious order with the Sisters of Mount Carmel, you have chosen to use your gifts and talents, your knowledge, your experience in service to the local church, the archdiocese. Um, why is that important to you, especially considering many people in the church, people in the pews and outside the church, think it's you know a man's world, and, and here you are with this very important role in the, with the local church. I think it goes back to my role as educator, as my training. Um, as an educator, my experience as an educator, and and again to Mother Cabrini, um, speaking very clearly about the the best and greatest heritage that you can give to a child is an education. And that's not only true of children, but it's also true of adults. Um, It's important for us to educate our people in the faith. And in my role as Safe Environment Coordinator, I truly, truly believe that the best gift we can give to people is an understanding of the importance and the value of each and every child as being a gift of God and created in the image of God. And you have the unique opportunity of working with seminarians, of working with priests, of working with pastors, of working with bishops, of working with principals and teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, What is that? mean to be able to um, be you, you as that witness to them for what is so important to you? Sometimes it's frightening. <laughs> sometimes it's frightening. Um, the, and sometimes it's, um, most of the times it's rewarding. Mm-hmm. It's very rewarding, especially with Archbishop Amon here in New Orleans. Um, he is so, so much a blessing, um, not only to safe environment, but to the people of in general. Um, but I'll be with the uh, monks tomorrow at the seminary um, across the lake. I'm talking about boundary issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met with, I gave a talk to the priest in the Diocese of Lafayette recently about boundaries. Um, to just, it's important for me to reach people where they are and try to help them to understand that I'm not here to be their enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm here to help save, to protect them, as well as to protect the children. And, and I, I believe people are starting to understand that. Yeah. And you told me a story recently about speaking to a young group of seminarians and about their, their, their experience growing up being just so different than, than past generations. You, as um, a woman, as someone who's formally trained in education, who's someone who's worked in safe environment for so long, um, how, what message do you give them, and, and where do you see the hope in, in, our, in our church today? 
the message we have to give them is exactly that, the message of hope. Um, and we have to show them the hope. We have to give them examples of, you know, look, you grew up to do this. You're in the seminary. That's hopeful. We want to be able to give children today um, real childhood experiences so that they can grow up with that excitement about their faith, that love of their faith. And that's what, again, is going to give them the next generation hope. And you shared with me before we started a quote that you wanted to share with everyone watching. You want to, you want to share that and talk to me about why it, it means something to I'm you? I'm reading a book right now. It's Parker Palmer's book, On the Brink of Everything. It's about aging. Mm. Um, but it, it's an excellent book. And one of the quotes that I'm using is, when we feel certain that the human soul is no longer at work in the world, it's time to make sure that ours is, is visible to someone somewhere. And I believe that in my heart that this is the responsibility or the task of the Safe Environment Coordinators today. Um, that we, and it's also the task of, of women in the church, that we can make visible to someone every day um, the, the, the strength and the wisdom and the love that's in our soul. And that's put there because of, it's put there by God. It's God's love and God's wisdom that's there. So my prayer every day is people ask me, how do you get up and do your job every day? You know, my prayer every day is when I wake up and I hit that ground running that I can bring that love of God to someone somewhere along the, day, along the line during the day. And, and that's what's important. Well, Sister Mary Ellen, we are grateful for your witness. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you.